Motorotri went over a significant update from the older first versions to now the second version, which changes a lot about how the program works on the background, how to install it, and even the syntax of the code itself. It generally improves it significantly, and that's why I'm going to now fully use it for all of my future scripts and videos. So let's go over how to install it. First, you go to their official website, autohotkey.com slash v2. Here's the link to the latest installer and even a change log from v1 to v2. I'm also going to later show you how to in put it into Visual Studio Code to make the usage much easier. So let's click the download link. I already have it here in my development folder. So let's open the folder. Now you just double click the setup. It will ask you where to put it. Then you need to confirm the admin request. And that's basically all you need to do to get it working on the most basic level how I showed it in my older videos with auto key version 1. Now you can select to create a new script. Or you can simply close this down, go to desktop, for example, new text document. Let's call it test. We need to put this magic line at the start to require auto hotkey version 2 because otherwise the compiler does not know it, which version you want to use, and for some reason it assumes it still uses version 1. Now let's make a simple script. When I press A, it should press B, so we can easily test if it's working. We need to put the entire script for the hotkey into curly brackets. Send B. Let's save this. Now we rename it to RK. And we already got our working script. Now let's go to the key test website. After uh, I run it. Now when I press A, it should press B. You can see it's working very nicely. Of course, you can adjust if it presses A or if it doesn't press A or whatever. Now let's go over the second thing you might want to do with AutoHotkey, and that is to create .exe files out of these scripts. To do that, we need to open the AutoHotkey dash to now select the option to compile a script. It will throw you probably an error that autotkey to exe is not installed. You just click install it for me. Now we can select our test.autotkey as our source file. And our destination will just be again test. It will end with exe. And now we just press convert. We have a few options here. I'm just using the 64 bit version. You can even select like icons and even compressions. So let's convert it. It told us it was successful, obviously. There wasn't much that could go wrong. Now we can stop the existing script and we can run this. This is already a file you can send to basically anyone with a Windows computer and they should be able to run it. They don't need to have AutoHotKey installed. Of course, it will most likely tell them some sort of virus warning because antivirus software is just terrible. Now we can again go to the key test website and we can see it's still doing what we want. You can see here at the top, every time I press A, it also presses B. 
let's stop it and let's go over how to get this to work with Visual Studio Code. To download Visual Studio Code, you again go to the official website. In this case, it's code.visualstudio.com. You click on the big button to download it for Windows. I assume you're on Windows. I already again have the setup. Then you just open the setup. You click to install it. You agree to the license agreements and you select where it should be put. And then when you open it, it should look somewhat like this. And now to explain to this software that AutoHotkey is a language that it is supposed to support and show you options for it and so on, we need an extension. It's called AutoHotKey V2. You need to be careful here and select the right extension, this one by THQBY, AutoHotKey V2 language support, no, not any of the other ones. Or maybe there is one that has both, but this is the only one I found that was working. You install it, here should be a button to install it, I already have it. And now you go to the extension settings, you scroll down to auto hotkey to interpreter path, and you put in the path to your autohotkey.exe for the compiling. I can show you this, when I selected C development folder, it created this folder here, auto hotkey. Here you go to version 2 or v2, you might, because if you have, for example, v1, it might be another option. And you simply copy this path here, and then you just do one of these slashes and auto hotkey.exe, or you can even use 64 bit if you are on a 64-bit computer, which I assume you are. This is just the shortcut to both of them, and it just picks the right one automatically. Now, when we open test.autohotkey, we can see the code here. It already does some nice coloring. It even gives us some options, like, let's say, we want to use the, for example, a index of the current loop operation. We can just use a underscore index. It already shows us the options, which is a huge help, especially at the start. It also allows us to format the code. So it's much easier to read it now. And when we press on this triangle, it even runs the script for us. You can see it's running it. It didn't throw us any output, thankfully, which means it's running fine. If I would, for example, right now make a mistake here, and now I would try to run it, you can see it will even tell us where the mistake is. And to run this auto-hotkey stuff through command line, I will show you another extension that I use, which you might have noticed I have two triangles here. What you do is you can either go where I'm going right now in the code runner settings because I just use it for a bunch of other languages. Here in the executor map, you can scroll down to auto-hotkey. And all you really do is, you, if you are in a command line, you go 
to the path where you have autohotkey.exe. Then you just write this down and select enter. Of course, file name will be the name of your script. Ideally, you want to have autohotkey.exe path in your environment variables, which I will show you how to get. Edit the system. This is also important. You want to edit the system environment variables, not the ones for your account. Go to environment variables. And now you go down in to here to find path. It's here in system variables again, not the user variables. Edit. And here we have C development key v2. This is probably unnecessary for most of you. And you could have stopped by just the end of the installation for Visual Studio Code. Or even before that. Obviously, I have no idea what you want to do with AutoHotKey. But please, if this video helped you, share it, like it, leave comments. You can also ask me questions. You can go to my Discord or any of my other social media, ask me for help with AutoHotKey v2. Ah, of course, when I have the time, I will try to help you. Please don't like press me to help you instantly, like ask me 20 questions in two seconds and then wonder why I don't answer immediately. I have a life, which is fairly surprising for a Minecraft player. And just in general, if you know people who want to make programs that press keys for you or move the mouse or whatever, tell them about all the hotkey we do. It's really a very nice uh, scripting language and makes things that would normally, like something like this would probably take you, I don't know, 50 lines in C++ or something like that. And this is just trivial. And of course, there are other features that you don't need to code yourself. You don't need to go through some other libraries or anything like that to get. So I hope I helped you and have a nice day.